My name is Boots Allen and the fly I'm tying for you today is a Brown Drake Emerger. Um, it's based on a fly tied by uh, Ken Burkholder. He called it the Hangdy Downdy Emerger and it was a fly that kicked tail one year in the, uh, the uh, Snake River One Fly Contest, the Jackson Hole One Fly Contest. Um, um, I was lucky enough to have a contestant in my boat, uh, guiding that, that tournament, who uh, fished this fly to absolute perfection one year. So I'm going to show you this. The one I'm going to tie for you is based on a fly similar to a drake, and that's called a Hecuba. Um, so you can think of this also as a Hecuba merger, but you can change the colors around, and you can have a gray drake, a brown drake, a green drake. You can shorten it up and maybe have a, a, a PMD. Uh, what I'm tying for you today is a basically a Hecuba emerger. The hook we're going to use today is a Dairiki 135. It's a common nymph hook. It has a, uh, the hook point turned out just slightly from the eye of the hook. Um, it's a stout hook, very, very strong, hence its popularity in the one fly tournament where if you break a hook, um, you're pretty much done fishing for the day. I'm going to use a tan 6 aught thread. And this will form a big piece of the body, and you really have to wrap a lot of the thread to create the body, but we'll get to that in just a bit. I'm going to start by tying in the trailing shuck, and the trailing shuck is going to be these small tentacle legs. Um, these were uh, these ones particularly come from Montana Fly Company. Um, the original shuck was uh, Zelon. It's a very popular shuck material. Um, I kind of been toying with these tentacle legs as shuck material as well. I like the little bit of translucence it's ha it has. It has more of a of a pillowy flow to it in the water as well, so I think it's a bit more realistic than, than Zelon. That will get tied right here to the, the bend of the hook, secure the legs in, and wrap that right on down a bit. And that will be the shuck. And I'll just secure the rest of these legs. And I'm doing this instead of trimming it because I'm going to need a lot of thread there to form the body. So that's in. Now I bring my thread right back up to noticeably shy of the hook point. This is where I'm going to tie in the uh, wing. The original wing. Ken Burkholder's original wing with the Hangdy Downdy was constructed of bear hair, which is a top-notch material. Um, bear hair is kind of hard to find, though, so what I instruct most people to do is to use the closest synthetic to that, and the closest synthetic to that is um, EP Silky Fibers, and it's this material here. Um, uh, the way the sun rays kind of go through, um, or the the light rays go through uh, EP silky fibers is very similar to what you'll see with bear hair. The first time that Burkholder was tying with bear hair, it was to um, imitate uh, salmon flies and have a big puffy wing with constructed bear hair and uh, it was very, very realistic. But with this, we're going to be doing uh, EP silky fibers. And these fibers come in all kinds of colors as well, uh, green, gray, purple. Um, this particular color is sand, and it has a pretty realistic look um, color-wise to what you'd find on a brown drake or a hecuba. Uh, hecuba is a big bug, as you can kind of tell. Um, in fact, I would say it's bigger than a drake, most of the specimens I've, I've seen, and that's pretty big for a mayfly. So should have this fairly decent size and this one here might do the trick. If you noticed as I tied 
this uh, material going back, I trimmed it in stages, trying to get a get it um, tapered. The reason I do that, I'm kind of a big fan of some of Scott Sanchez's philosophies on flies, and one of those is that emergers always share uh, three very key um, qualities. One is a trailing shuck, which we have right here. I'm going to actually trim this down a bit. The other is a compressed body. And that's what we're doing here. We're showing this compressed body where most of the body is the abdomen and thorax is up towards the top of the shuck that they're crawling out of. And that's the idea behind this here. I'm just going to wrap and cover as much as this uh, excess material as possible. And I come up here and I'm going to stand this wing up into a parachute post. You can see it's a it's a big wing. You know, pretty thick, pretty full bodied, and, and that's the kind of wing you'll definitely find as a Hecuba or a brown drake or a green drake or a gray drake as they're emerging is that that big, big wing. It's a tall wing. Anybody, any of you out there who've seen or fished a drake, that's the one noticeable thing is a very, very big wing. This, of course, is very big, and at the end of the uh, fly, I'm going to end up trimming that wing down some. So I'm going to bring that on, that thread back to the base. If you look at that, that's a pretty covered body, I think. Now I'm going to tie in the ribbing material, and the ribbing material is nothing more than just flat wax nylon. This is your equivalent of a 3 aught. Going to tie this in right there at the base as well. Now I'm going to bring this on back some more, this thread, so that I'm covering up the brown ribbing material so that that's not showing through basically where the, the excess is that I tied onto the fly. And it's a lot of thread. You'll go through a lot of thread with this fly. Now from there, I'm going to give this a wrap, wet it down just a bit, give it a little bit of a twist, and we'll tighten it up some. Now I'm going to start wrapping this forward to create the rib. Now comes a pretty critical piece of this fly if you're going to fish it in the one fly tournament. And that is a bomb proof body. And that's what we're going to do right here. You get several strikes from a fish throughout a day, all this thread will start to rip apart from the teeth. You want to make sure that this something is covering that to make it impenetrable and uh, the and make it strong also on that material of choice or that substance of choice is Zappagap. Um, just about every guide in the One Fly Tournament carries Zappagap. And uh, they carry Zappagap uh, basically to repair flies, uh, but also to uh, put on knots and whatnot um, to make the knots stronger. Uh, there's a general rule that after a, a competitor has caught um, about half a dozen fish or has just landed a very large fish, uh, you retie your knots.
And you'll also notice it's going to give a very glassy appearance to the fly as well, to that body. And I'm going to let that cure for just a bit. So after we've let this cure, we're going to move on to the next piece of the fly, which is tying in the legs. And you might recall I was talking to you about uh, how I'm a big fan of Scott Sanchez and some of his ideas. And he was talking about three key pieces to the fly. Uh, the shuck, the compressed body. The other piece is a jumble of legs. And that's what we're tying in next is a jumble of legs. And what we're going to use here are tentacles like we had just used, but these are medium-sized tentacles, um, not the small ones. You can see the size difference right there between these mediums and these smalls. So I'm going to grab a group of these, roughly, roughly six or so, but I'm going to grab a few more just in case some of them come un or loosen while I'm tying this. And get these tied in here, and these are going to go be tied in right underneath right underneath the wing. And then I'm going to bring this forward as well just to secure the legs in to this area. Voila. And now I'll trim all of this down. What I'm cutting back here, which you probably can't see, are the butt sections of some of the legs that came to the other side. And as you get that down, now I'm going to count the legs. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have one extra leg, and I'm just going to pull that on out. And I doubt a seventh leg is going to be too much of a problem anyway. So, there are your legs for the fly. And I'm going to leave these long and trim them after I finish the fly. That way I can manage these a little bit better with my fingertips as I'm wrapping some more of the material. The next piece I'm going to tie in is basically a wing support. Uh, Again, a pretty critical part of this fly. What I'm going to be using is basically a tan two millimeter foam. Get, and we're going to cut off a bit of a square, nothing, nothing too big. Something right about that size. And what I'm going to do is cut these little wedges into it. Well, one wedge really, but on two sides. So basically that's forming a little bit of an angle like that. And that's going to get wedged right at the base of the wing to the back. Of it. And that really assists it, this fly in, uh, in flotation. This is in a merger, you know. What's the typical thing with most mergers? After a few fish strikes, you're dealing with a, a uh, you're dealing with a, uh, a fly that's starting to submerge a little too much. Oh boy. And uh, if you can't see the fish actually hit the fly, then you're probably not going to get that fish, and that's counter to the one fly. The idea is to land the fish in as many as you can. So, there's the base of your wing. Now I'm going to tie in a little bit of hackle. The hackle I'm going to use is just your basic brown hackle. And I'm not even going to really bother measuring it to the hook. Because um, it's not going to play the, the general role that it is supposed to play in ter terms of assisting it with flotation. So your hackle's in there now. In the butt. Now I'm going to tie in the uh, dubbing. 
I'm just going to use a general cream dubbing, something akin to this. And again, you can use whatever kind of color best matches the fly. So for something like this, um, a cream, um, a tan, uh, nothing too dark though. You don't want to go into something brown, especially with a Hecuba and obviously you know, the, uh, the brown drakes really are more of a light brown color than anything. I'm just going to apply that without overdoing it. You don't need too much as most of you know. And we'll begin to wrap this, and we're going to wrap this all the way back. We'll see if I've done enough, and if we haven't, I'll just add some more. Under the wing. Under the wing again. Come back up, and I'm going to apply just a little bit more dubbing to cover up these handful of gaps we get. And that should cover it all up. And then a trick my father showed me that I've also seen Jack Dennis do is taking some of that dubbing and wrapping it right around the base of the parachute post. Now, from there, I'm now going to begin to wrap this hackle. Secure it down. And I'll bring that thread right to the front. Pull up some of that hackle. There we go. And you almost have a finished fly. What I'm going to do to end this is do some of the cleanup work, crimp that uh, wing support back there just a bit, pull the legs down, crimp the legs just under the base of the hook or the where the hook point is. And then get that wing looking a little bit more manageable, but still definitely seeable. And there you go. And then your fly will basically be riding right about here in the water with the rest of that body underneath. And it's just a superb fly, one of my favorites. And you'll notice I whip finished it at the uh, eye of the hook. I would also, if you're going to be using it in any type of quote competition where you're only relying on one fly, a better option is to throw some Zappa Gap on there as well. That's it.